Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Role Player. This was sent to me by Thunderworks Games and is designed by Keith Matejka. In Role Player, you compete with your opponents to create the greatest fantasy adventurer who has ever lived, preparing to embark on an epic quest. Let me show you how to play. So in Role Player, you're basically trying to create your greatest character sheet, and there are many different ways to score. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you get assigned a class, uh, which comes with a specific color. Um, they are double-sided and you can choose. You can see there are different scoring requirements for each and also different powers. Um, I just chose the sorcerer here. Um, you have a backstory and you have a, an alignment. Uh, you also start with a certain number of dice uh, rolled and put into your uh, stats here. Uh, we'll kind of explain how this all works later. But this is basically how the beginning of the game looks. Each round, a certain number of dice are rolled, and then they are put into ascending order. If there's ever a tie uh, for a number, uh, the whoever is the start player can choose what order to put them in. Then we go into the dice phase where each player, starting with the start player, will choose an initiative card and place that die on their sheet. If there's any gold on the card, like these, you will get the gold as well. So let's say I choose uh, this one. So. That means I get the number two initiative card and a coin. This is a gold die. So whenever I pick a gold die, I get two gold. Also, if I ever put a die in the third column of a row, uh, I get another coin. So like if I put it here, I get a coin. Now let's go into how some of this scoring works. So first off, you have your class card. And as you can see on this card, it has specific uh, requirements for stats at once. So at the end of the game, if your strength is 14 or higher, you get one star. If your in uh, intellect is exactly 18, you'll get four stars. Uh, so that's one scoring parameter to consider for the end of the game. And obviously that's determined by your total of dice. Also each uh, race has different modifiers. So the Dragonkin has a plus two strength and a minus two dexterity innate. Another way to score is your backstory. So this one, if you have those specific colored dice in those spots, then the more you have correct, the more points you'll get. If you have all six, you'll get six stars at the end. If you have only uh, four to five, you'll get three. Um, so there's that. And then there's your alignment. This will move throughout the game, and depending on where it lands, if it's on this spot, I'll get three stars. If it's on any of these, it'll be minus one star. Dice, when you place them, have to be placed left to right. Now, whenever I put a dice in an attribute row, I may take the attribute action. So let's kind of go through these. If I place one in strength, like I just did, I get to change the face value of any die on my sheet to the face value on the opposite side of the dice. So I could be like, okay, I'm gonna turn this one into a six. If I place it into dexterity, I could choose uh, any two dice uh, on my sheet and swap them. So I could be like, all right, this one and this one will be swapped. If I place it in constitution, uh, I get to increase or decrease one of my die on the sheet by one. Die don't loop, so it's not like a six can go to a one um, or vice versa. But uh, yeah, so if I did this, I could be like, all right, I'm going to boost this one up to a uh, two. If I placed it in the intellect, or uh, intelligence, I guess, intelligence uh, row, I get to choose any die on my sheet and re-roll it. And I can either keep the new value or put it back to what it was. If I place the die in the wisdom row, I can uh, move my tracking token on my alignment card one space up, down, left, or right. So I could go like that. If I place it in the charisma row, uh, I can take a charisma token uh, those give you a minus one gold discount for that turn. However, if you don't use it that turn, then it's wasted. Regardless, wherever I place the die that turn, that's the optional action I can take, depending on where I put it. Once each player does that uh, and has an initiative card, then for the market phase, you go in ascending order. So whoever has the first card gets first pick, second, third, and so on. To buy a market card, you need to pay the... Uh, cost in the top right. So this jewel dagger is three coins. If I spend the three coins, I get a jewel dagger. When scoring attribute goals, I get plus one value to all gold dice. 
For armor, trait, or skill cards, there is no limit. Uh, however, for weapon cards, you can only have uh, you can only have up to two hands worth. So this is one hand worth, as you can see. Uh, there is a limit on those. Whenever you buy a trait card, like this loyal card, uh, you have to move your uh, alignment token in that direction. And if you can't do it, then you can't buy the card. This loyal card would give you four stars if you complete all your attribute goals. Meanwhile, if I buy a skill card, uh, these are ones that I can move my alignment token to use it. In this case, if I move it down, I can decrease the face value of one die on my character sheet by one to gain two gold. Once everyone has bought a card, or you have the option to, if you don't want to buy a card, you pick a card from the market, discard it, and you get two coins. But once everyone has done that, uh, you may then refresh one of your exhausted skills. These skills can only be used once per turn. You draw new cards for the market, uh, place coins on the initiative cards that weren't chosen for that round, and then you pass the dice bag and you go on. And that's pretty much the core game flow is choose your initiative card, place the die, do the optional die action, then in the initiative order, buy cards uh, and try to try to fill your goals. The game ends once all the rows are filled uh, and then you do final scoring. That includes, again, like I mentioned, your attribute goals, uh, your... Uh, you do also get one star for each uh, matching colored dice of your at, of your class. So for each blue dice at the end, I would get an extra star. Um, you check your alignment, see where that's at. Check your backstory for matches. Uh, any cards that score at the end, uh, like armor or traits, uh, you'll get those as well. And that is how you win. Uh, if there's a tie, uh, most gold. Yeah, also I didn't show this, but some examples of class abilities. Mysterious, after buying a trait card, you may take an intelligence attribute action. Or enigmatic, when discarding a card from the market, gain four gold instead of two. Uh, and just to show you so how what some of these other cards look like, they include stuff like leather boots. Uh, this is plus one star, or this is for the more of the leather set cards you get, you get more points at stars at the end. And it's also plus one extra star for a set if you are a purple or black class. Long sword, when scoring attribute goals, plus one value to all dice of your class color. And uh, that's pretty much it. You just uh, buy cards, uh, place the die, try to match as many goals as you can and score the most points at the end. And that's the game. So I'm not a DD and d guy, but I do like the theme in this game of making your character sheet. And like, you know, I like dice placement games in general. So overall, I think this is solid. I have a few nitpicks though. Uh, since the classes and backstories you get are randomized, that means sometimes depending on which character you pick at the beginning, some of your attribute goals can be literally impossible because of the modifiers. It does feel like a little bit of an oversight that at the very start of the game, some of your goals, just by a random chance, can be completely unachievable. Uh, the actual flow of gameplay is fun and actually a lot simpler than it looks in a good way, like slotting dice in. You put the dice in, you activate the row if you want to get the ability. That's a fun mechanic, and I like having to juggle several different sort of scoring methods uh, and trying to prioritize what's best depending on what dice you draft. Like, okay, I'm not finding that color, I'll go for this goal instead. I think another nitpick I have is that it can feel a bit too dependent on luck, whether it's if the right di the right colored dice come out of the bag into the market, or that some of the cards can feel a little too swingy, maybe a little too powerful, or on the other hand, completely useless if they don't come out at the right time. I also feel like you see a lot of the cards in the game in one playthrough, which I feel like I kind of wish there were maybe more variety in cards so that subsequent, uh, subsequent games can feel fresher. But overall though, it's a solid game. If you like this sort of D&D style theming of character sheets, and if you like, or if you like these sort of dice placement games, uh, you can't go wrong with this one. I think it's definitely a fun game.